Gunner hit PC. The game gives hope for further development. The setting of the game is a hot war 1985. Therefore, everything that would be seen in the current theater of Operation Superior no later than this date. The confrontation is conducted along the lines of NATO OVD, but not now only the USA and the GDP are represented in the game as a representatives of the Warsaw Pact. There are prepared missions, there are more than 4,000 of them, as well as a dynamic campaign, consecutive battle for one of the sides where the winner is the one who manages to inflict more losses on the other side. The game maintains a certain balance between simulator and affordable realism. Zora is a fairly realistic ballistic model for shelves that need to take into account corrections for height and displacement, but advanced models like M1 Abrams, M60 or T72 M1 have an automatic range finder which simplifies shooting even at the longest distances. In terms of the MCA, thermal imaging signs were also implemented. Ammunition distribution mechanism implanted, ammunition of the first stage and the need to replenish machine. For example, 10 sub-caliber and some more hit shelves can be located in the available space from the loader if you shoot all the sub-caliber shelves. You will need to replenish them for the storage of the second stage, so during the missions you will have to combine different shots. The game has a pretty good voice acting of American crews that are most alive. For example, if your Abrams start to get hit, then the crew starts to panic and the same charging yells as if not in itself, and not only him, but when they spend time in battle they get used and start to sound colder and calmly. At the moment, in scenarios and campaigns, you can see Abrams M1 M M1 IP, M60 A1, and M60 A3, M2 Bradley, M113, T55 A, T72 M, and T72 M1, BMP1, BRDM2. Calculation of ATG tow and concourse, which can be stationary controlled, they cannot move, but launching ATG moves is nice thing. I will note right away that the balance in the game at the current stage is not particularly observed. American Abrams confidently dominate T-50A and T-72M. In general, there is a shortage of more modern tanks and ammunition, especially sub-caliber ones, behind the GDR, while the T-72-T-70M uh, M1 are forced to use uh, sub-caliber ammunition outdated by 1985 for their 125mm guns, which hardly penetrate the Abrams only in the hull. The Abrams use 105mm M8033 subcaliber ammunition, which do not take T-72M, T-72M1 into the turret, but easily penetrate into the hull. Uh, and here the presence of the thermal imaging sites for the Abrams, and we get the most of the battles between the Abrams and the T-72M M1, ends with a known outcome. At the same time, of course, uh, hunting Abrams is not just T-72M M1, but some T-55A that not always the same cumulative ones can do break uh, through the side of the tower. It's a real test, but an interesting test. The next to be added is the GSVG, the Soviet force should make adjustment to the balance between NATO and the POVD. Calling it Glowtender Killer is too early, the game is cheesy and there is a little content, but even now the tanks feel better in the field than in a formation game, and shooting is a generally separate pleasure. LMAS work or try to work close enough to the original tanks while being controlled by a couple buttons without much difficulty and getting used too. A good balance between casuals and as pain in the spirit of the add on uh, tanks of ill 2. Uh, graphics just want to be nothing super beautiful but never disgusting. Tanks are a drown norms, quick battle missions of particularly random generation. There was a, a 
approximate spots of opponents and their number, but they differ a little. The same thing happens in the company even more randomly. In other worlds, similar tasks happen. We look forward to further development of the whole enterprise.